Hey guys, what's going on today? We're going to talk about this knife. This is the Matsy knife uh, basilisk. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Um, what is Matsy knives? Matsy knives is this company right here. Um, I'm not even going to try to pronounce his name. Mm, not even going to try. Masiage Majrazuski? Majrazuski? I don't know. Anyway, Polish designer. Uh, started a company. If you go to their website, they kind of remind me a little bit of maybe like Quiet Carry or uh, James Brand or Turnstile. Anyway, it's a bunch of designers or they have, well, the one designer for right now, but they're talking about having more who design different EDC objects. They've got pens and pry bars and all kinds of stuff on there. So go to the website, check them out. Um, I really don't have much to say about them except for this is the only product of theirs I own, and that's this knife, and this is the Basilisk. And the knives, at least this one, was made by Best Tech over in China. So, and it's interesting. I have a assembly video of it. I highly recommend you go watch it. Um, it really kind of shows a lot of the kind of the interesting build of this knife because it is kind of interesting. Uh, it is a titanium frame lock. And it is either thumb stub or flipper. And we'll talk about that flipper tab. But let's just start with getting the basics out of the way. Let's get some numbers on this guy. We have a blade length of three inches, cutting edge of about two and three quarters, handle length of four and a sixteenth for an overall length of seven and a sixteenth. Um, this is a kind of a chubby fat little guy. Um, he is just over a half inch, almost nine sixteenths thick. Um, blade height is at its tallest point, about an inch and a sixteenth. Blade stock thickness is pretty thick, actually. It is, for the size of the blade, right out of eighth inch, which is a little bit thick for a three inch blade. Um, to do how about we get a weight on him let's get oziri out here oziri ounces 4.16 ounces which blows me away with the amount of milling which i'll show you in a minute that is inside this knife Milliliters, 118 grams, 118.26 of a pound. Uh, I don't even know what that means. So anyway, 4.16 ounces. It is a hefty little dude. And that is with a ton of milling and my scale. There it goes. And that's with a ton of milling inside which I have a flashlight with me now, how about that? So we should be able to see some of that in there. I mean, it is really milled out in there. So as you can see by all those pockets and it's that way on both sides, all the way back. You can see it in there, there's milling in there, milling back there. Um, hard to describe why this knife is so heavy with all that milling, except for they did use really, really thick titanium. It is contoured so that's nice uh let's do some size comparisons to some other knives here we go next to the para 2 and as you can see it is much shorter than the para 2 here it is next to the para 3 by spiderco and it is almost exactly the same as the para 3 Here it is next to the Cold Steel Mini Tough Light. And as you can see, it's much bigger than the Mini Tough Light. And then here it is next to the Big Mama Jamma. The Cold Steel 4 Max Scout. And of course the 4 Max Scout is much, much bigger 
and probably a few ounces heavier. All right, so uh, let's get into the blade of this knife, drop point blade with a swedge. We've seen it a million times on a million different knives, right? Oops, wrong one. Oh my gosh, they copied the bug out. <laughs> no, they didn't. This is a drop point blade with the swedge. Just like everybody likes to do these days. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, although it is very tall and very thick, it's ground actually pretty thin behind the edge. If I can get in there and let's show you that. It comes down to a very reasonable thin edge. This knife does cut fairly well. I've taken it to work a bunch and used it. It's a good hard user knife for that because it's got nice thick stock, so it's good that way. The thumb studs are kind of those volcano-y type that I usually don't like, but on this particular knife, because I have so much room for access to that thumb stud, you can get on the side of it to push and don't have to push right down on the top so it doesn't make your thumb sore. So the blade is stonewashed. I did sharpen it and it sharpened up really nice and even on both sides, which is a wonderful thing. Has jimping that is pretty much practically useless. <laughs> it's okay, it kind of is an index. Should be out here. I don't know why more knives companies don't put their jimping out here. It's where it should be. Um, yeah, so tall blade, thin, a little bit thick on the spine, ground very thin, has a very good tip nice and thick it will pierce but it's nice and thick so you're not going to snap that tip all right the handle is like i said contour g10 i can get a full easy four finger grip with lots left behind you can even go back here and still get a full four four finger grip grip um, i wear extra large gloves but that's mostly because of the length of my fingers not because they're big fat huge meat sausages so um yeah, they're kind of thin. So your hand may vary on this knife. Your mileage may vary, as the old saying goes. Um, the grip on the knife uh, is all pretty good, except for one thing. <sighs> Mr. Matsy, I don't know if you'll ever watch this video, and I don't know why you designed this this way, but that little point, that little point, right there it is terrible <laughs> it's terrible i it's the one thing i mean this knife is pretty nice otherwise all the way around i gotta say best tech did a really good job with the machining and everything um but that's just a bad design idea just make a round ended clip just make the end of it round like that it doesn't i mean it can be milled titanium that's great but just make the end of it round Well, that one's a little bit pointy too. We'll talk about that one. Uh, yeah, I don't really have a milled titanium round clip near me, but I could have just made that round. It'd been a lot nicer because it is nice and wide. So it doesn't like none of this part gives you any kind of heat in your grip, but that does. Uh, but there is your lanyard hole. Uh, I'm not a lanyard guy. I don't really care. Um, but it is contoured, it is titanium, it does feel, otherwise, it feels really good in my hand. Except for that hot spot on that clip. I still use the knife, I'm still going to keep the knife, just because I kind of like the design. I like the fact that the blade disappears in the handle, as you know, that's one of my favorite things in most knives. So, action is, well, it depends on what you use. If you're using the thumb stud, it's got a perfect detent for thumb stud. You can finger flick it and you can flip it, but the detent is just a little tiny bit soft for flipping. In my opinion, I was able to, yeah, see, you can flip it without and make it fail. Um, that could also be part of the design of this flipper, which I really like this flipper. I mean, if you want an unobtrusive flipper, this is the one to go with. They don't make them, I mean, except for this. Oh. Gee whiz, what's going on with me? 
there we go. This knife is brand spanking new, by the way, so it's still a little bit stiff. But except for this, there's no flippers, hardly any out there. Like even the smock flipper is a little bit different than this. But anyway, jumped on the end, so you grab it with your finger and you just light switch it like that, and away she goes. And it's carved out inside of there, so it's got a place for your fingertip to go. And you just light switch that baby. There is no push button. Sorry. Uh, fit and finish on this knife, like I said, is Best Tech. Uh, people say that Best Tech is right up there with Riot and their fit and finish and machining. And um, except for, like, why didn't they notice that that clip was sharp right there? I don't know. I don't know. But the one thing that I do see that also. Uh, it doesn't really bother me, but I kind of wish they would have done a better job of countersinking the pivot screws. That pivot screw on that edge on both sides, the knife curves, the pivot screws flat. So now you get an edge on both sides. I think they could have countersunk that and made that go away. That would have been a little bit nicer. Um, is it a deal breaker? Again, no. But um, the going price for these is like $350 or something like that. I didn't pay that much. I bought this from my friend Sharp Dad. He gave me an extremely good deal. So there's where it says Matsy on it. There is your serial number, or not serial number, but these knives are numbered. This is number 58 of I don't know how many. Um, it does not have a, a blade steel marking, but supposedly it is uh, M390 and I did sharpen it and I will say that it kind of sharpens like M390. It took a while, but it got really sharp um, Haven't done a paper cut test with it Let's see if I even have I thought I had I maybe have uh, Huh, oh there it is All right, I have some paper here it's just regular old lined notebook paper. Let's see. Does this knife do what it's supposed to do? Oh my gosh, yeah. It's... It's, uh, it's pretty dang sharp. Huh, except for right there. Wow, that's weird. I shouldn't do paper test cuts. It's pretty dang sharp. Pretty sharp. Uh, might have a little bit of stickiness on it from cutting tape at work. So, uh, drop shut action is really good. It's just, I like it. I like it. Everything except for that pocket clip. It is not deep carry. You get some sticking out, which is handy to grab onto. At least for me, I don't, like my knives don't have to have deep carry clips. I enjoy a good deep carry clip, you know, but it doesn't have to be that way. It would be nice if it had one. Uh, you will notice that there are no screws showing on the clip. Um, that's one of the other things I would say that I would like to see them do is they have captured pivot. Um, they should have Chicago screws. I don't like these where you got to go in from both sides. This one you don't, but this one you do. Otherwise, it'll spin. Or they should have made the barrel inside there, have it squared out or something so it can't spin on you. Because that was kind of a pain in the butt. You can see that in my disassembly video. Uh, what else? What else? Uh, what do I think? My just overall thoughts. I think that, for me anyway, I kind of like it. Sometimes I like carrying a, a thicker, heavier knife, which is kind of cool. Um, like I said, I think the ergonomics aren't bad except for that clip. Uh, I think the action is really good. It's definitely a fidget factor knife. You can fidget this thing like nobody's business. Um, it is not left or right hand carry. It is right hand tip up carry only, which is the only way to carry a knife anyway. So it doesn't bother me. Um, yeah, I think it's okay. I think it's okay. I'm kind of excited to see what Matsy does next. Uh, is it worth $360 for a Chinese made knife? I don't know. There's a lot of milling in there. It is M390. I don't know. 
I, I can't recommend it at that price. I mean, it, again, it's like I've said about other knives. If you really, really like it, then yeah, just go ahead and pay the money and get it. But um, if you just need a knife as a cutting tool, I'd recommend a lot of other knives that are just as good um, performance-wise and a lot less money. So, uh, like I would say, go get one of these for a hundred and I think they're like a hundred and seventy dollars, and get a set of scales for sixty bucks, and you got basically the same thing, in a much slicier blade, just as good action and ambidextrous to boot. So, um, well, this one's not ambidextrous, but you can get them with their normal scale pattern on them. They're ambidextrous, and I'm pretty sure you can get scales that are ambidextrous for them. So, yeah, there you go. The Matsy Basilisk. I think a basilisk, isn't that a whale? What is a basilisk? I don't know. Someone comment below and tell me what a basilisk is. All right, guys. Uh, get your family together. Turn off the television. Get outdoors. Enjoy the outside. Toad sticker, out.